Hey guys, once again, this lesson will be covering Newton's second law and Newton's third law. Basically, before we go into the different laws, it's important um, to understand a couple of key concepts. Acceleration is obviously defined as the rate of change of velocity. Acceleration, and as you can see, if we apply that definition to a formula, we get acceleration equals the change in velocity over time. V being the final velocity and U being the, in, the initial velocity. Factors that affect acceleration, there are only two factors and that is mass and the net force. As we can see from these graphs, it is just basically um, letting one know the relationship between acceleration and mass um, and acceleration and another, a couple of other variables. So acceleration is inversely proportional to mass. Um, that's obviously just how you write what was said over here, like more mathematically. And acceleration is directly proportional to force, to net force. In Newton's second law equation, this is the fundamental equation and probably the equation that you do the most work with in the entire Newton's laws um, section. It is given as F net equals MA, F net obviously being the net force on an object, M being the mass of an object, and A being the acceleration of an object. F net is directly proportional to acceleration, given by that, and acceleration is inversely proportional to mass. Basically, before I move on, just to explain that, uh, especially with acceleration being inversely proportional to mass, the bigger and um, heavier the object is, um, the slower the acceleration of the object and vice versa. The um, lighter the object is, the greater acceleration the object will have because it has less um, weight force to overcome. Then if we look at a couple examples relating to Newton's second law, um, Oh yeah, just because, before I go any further, I would just like to define Newton's second law for our viewers. Newton's second law, when a net force is applied to an object of mass, the object accelerates in the direction of the net force. The acceleration is directly proportional to the net force and inversely proportional to the mass. Then, so if we go on to some more like practical examples relating to Newton's second law, Look at rockets. The acceleration of a rocket is also applied to the objects within the, the rocket, such as the astronauts or uh, ob just general objects within the rockets. Very important to note that the gravity acts on the rocket itself as well as the objects inside the rocket. And then lifts. Lifts is another important um, part of um, Newton's second law and it often involves um, a bit of explaining. So if we make reference to this diagram up here, we can see that if the tension force is greater than W, which is obviously the weight and the tension being the tension in the lift cable, then the F net is up. This could either mean that the lift is moving up getting faster or moving down getting slower. When W is greater than tension, then the F net is down. The lift could either be moving down getting faster or moving up getting slower. If T is equal to W, referring to this diagram, then there is no net force. The lift could be moving at constant velocity or it could be stationary. So just making another point on, on the third point here, another important thing to note is that net forces are only incurred when there is... Um, like a change, a change in the acceleration of the object. What I mean by that is that even if an object is moving at a constant velocity, a lot of students think that it's moving, therefore it's receiving um, a net force. However, it's only receiving a force, not a net force, if you know what I mean. Um, and then obviously it could either be stationary, that's pretty self-explanatory, it's not getting any force, so it will not move. Um, if the cable snaps, the lift is in free fall and T will be equal to zero. When, it, when the lift is in free fall, 
obviously it is just subject to um, the acceleration due to gravity which is given at 9.8 meters per second squared then scales in lifts another important concept um, of relating to Newton's second law so obviously we've got the force of this so we've got a man we draw a free body diagram we've got the man there represented by the dot force of the scale on the man and force of the earth on the man um, the lift will accelerate upwards if the tension is greater than the weight uh, same with the man the man will accelerate upwards if if um, the force of the scale on the man is greater than the force of the earth on the man just a quick tip if you must view f of s as t and w uh, this w over here as the weight component of the man then if we look at this particular um, section over here the mass of the man um, and the mass reading on the scale gets larger if you're moving upwards and the mass gets smaller if you're moving downwards this is just a nice example to put um, to put put what i've set up here into a bit more of a practical sort of setting so you can read through this example and understand how we get our acceleration of 0.82 meters per second squared upwards remember once again just a tip acceleration is a vector quantity therefore you must always include a direction then friction friction is another important concept um, because it plays a huge role in Newton's second law obviously you've got um, uh, friction exists between an object and a surface as you can see a small a small normal force is incurred when um, there's less interaction between the object and the surface and when there's a large um, a large normal force um, force is incurred when there is more interaction between the object and the surface from this we can infer that friction is directly proportional to the normal force there are two types of friction static friction and kinetic friction static friction so i'll use this example to explain this so the box is obviously at rest over here once the box is pushed obviously this force applied indicates that it's being pushed the box does not move due to static friction so there's obviously this friction holding the box back preventing it from moving forward if you keep pushing and applying more of a net force on the object the static friction is overcome that is when static friction turns to kinetic friction um, the, the, the applied force is now greater than this the maximum static friction and it now becomes kinetic friction uh, this takes me I'll just jump through here back to kinetic friction when the applied force is larger than the uh, maximum static friction object will move a kinetic frictional force will replace the static frictional force important to note kinetic friction is always less than static friction kinetic friction value remains constant regardless of the applied force the formula for kinetic friction kinetic friction is equal to the co coefficient of kinet kinetic friction times multiplied by the normal force then just going back here to what I just made reference to now in the kinetic friction section static friction is always larger than kinetic friction the reason for this is that when an object is stationary the interaction between the two surfaces is higher giving rise to higher static friction then maximum frictional force relating to static friction maximum static friction is equal to the coefficient of static friction um, multiplied by the normal force important to note that the coefficient of static friction as well as the coefficient of kinetic um, friction does not have units then if we jump here this is a nice just a nice summarizing graph to summarize what I've said here between static and kinetic friction as you can see as we increase the applied force along this way the static frictional force increases until it reaches its maximum the object is not in motion at the moment it still needs to overcome the static frictional force before it'll move then suddenly it overcomes the static um, the static frictional force and it transfers into kinetic friction the reason kinetic friction is a lot less 
um, of a frictional force than your maximum static friction is obviously due to that interaction being less between the surface and the object. When the object is experiencing kinetic friction, the object is obviously in motion. And once it experiences kinetic friction, uh, that kinetic friction remains constant on the object. Newton's third law. Newton's third law is defined as when object A exerts a force on object B, object B simultaneously exerts an equal and opposite force on object A. It is very important that you include that word simultaneously in order for the law to apply. Just some pointers regarding Newton's third law. The two forces are equal in magnitude, however opposite in direction. They act on different objects, they occur simultaneously, and they, uh, they act along the same plane or the same line. So if we take the hammer and nail um, example, when you're hitting a nail with a hammer, the force of the hammer on the nail is equal to the force of the nail on the hammer. Problems with two objects, you identify the objects, draw free body diagrams of either object, I mean of both objects, define the direction of acceleration, apply Newton's second law to each object, and then solve the equations. So this goes back to my, um, my first video on Newton's laws, which, which I will mention something about tension being very important because um, it's very important when solving these simultaneous equations. Well, here's an example of one of those um, simultaneous equations. So you look, we are now referring to two objects. We've got our object over there and our object over there. Our object here weighs one kilogram. This one weighs three kilograms. And we've got an applied force acting on this object of 10 newtons. First step. Draw free body diagrams for each object. Remember normal force, gravitational force, tension in the string between the objects. The normal force, and then moving to three kilogram object, you've got your normal force, your gravitational force, your applied force, and your tension force. Note that the tension force experienced by the one kilogram um, sort of object is the same as the tension force experienced by the three kilogram object which is basically the tension existing in this string in between them this is important because it helps solve your simultaneous equation then you apply newton's second law f net equals ma um, your f net acting on this object is obviously because your um, normal force and your gravitational force um, are balanced there's no net force vertically there's only a net force horizontally and that is your tension in the string so your net force will be your um, force of the tension in the string equals to your mass, which is one kilogram, times by your acceleration. But as you can see here, you've got two unknowns in this equation, which means that you'll need to use it in solving for a simultaneous equation. Same with the three kilogram, F net is equal to MA. However, this now, once again, your normal force is equal to your gravitational force. So you've got no net force acting in a vertical plane only a net force acting in a horizontal plane. And obviously, because the object is moving, you know that the force applied is greater than the tension force. So you say force applied minus the tension force is equal to three, which is the mass, three kilograms times by the acceleration. And all you've got to do here is do a simple uh, simultaneous equation and you'll come to find that the tension in between the ropes is 2.5 Newtons. Thank you very much.